Hi guys, Ronnie here, with a time trial themed video today, where upon request I will be comparing the Zip Super 9 carbon clincher and the Head Jet Black uh, disc clincher. So I ran uh, the Super 9 for the whole last season, but I don't own one anymore. This is a brand new one for the customer, and this is a head disc that I bought uh, this or the previous winter to use as a spare or sometimes as my main wheel depending on the conditions so which one of these discs is the best well unfortunately there is no easy answer to that both have their own merits advantages and disadvantages so let's go through that the first one the most important thing with any disc wheel or air wheel but discs in particular is how fast they are well, they, these are within one watt of each other, depending on the wind angle or the yaw angle. So that's uh, no real uh, tiebreaker in, by any means. Uh, if you have either of these, you're not going to be able to get, uh, have a good excuse in terms of aerodynamics. But there are other uh, features that where they are very very different so the first one and the most obvious one is the construction so if you look at the the zip uh, this is actually a proper structural disc what that means is that you have basically two carbon plates joined uh, at the brake track and held on or suspended uh, by a very stiff foam core Whereas uh, the head is basically a standard spoked uh, wheel aluminum clincher. You can see this is a brake track, this is the part where you can actually see the aluminum. And it has a very thin, super thin carbon fiber skin on it to provide uh, for the aerodynamics. Uh, advantages and disadvantages to that. Well, the zip, uh, of course, that's going to be. A bit lighter uh, it's roughly by 70 to 80 grams uh, and yeah for someone it's going to be a whole lot for someone else it won't matter so it really depends uh, on who you ask I'm in kind of the second uh, group I'm not really that particular about the weight uh, what I want to stress though is zip discs are notoriously tough and long lasting because well if you just look at it if you take it in your hands it's a super super solid item and i can't see it breaking anytime soon it will definitely never go out of shoe because it either breaks completely or will remain true forever that can't really be said for the head i'm sure it will be a very long lasting wheel as well but perhaps uh, you know, the standard spoke construction is a bit more prone to being wobbly or if you hit it in a pothole or something. And the carbon skin also is quite fragile, so you have to take real care for it to not damage this delicate little uh, layer on there. Because, well, I've shown in a previous video, you can actually see through it. It's just one ply of carbon, really nothing structural to it. Uh, yeah, so based on this you might uh, say that or expect that the zip will ride super harsh and the head will ride comfortably because of the spoked uh, construction, but actually both ride surprisingly well. Uh, there are lots of spokes in the head, but uh, even though uh, the zip is a solid construction, it still has a fairly nice ride quality and compliance to it, so it's a very well designed and tuned product in that regard. Another difference will be the actual shape. So the zip is basically a completely flat disc and it's, uh, it has a very slight widening towards the hub, but nothing you can really see by the naked eye. It also has the signature zip uh, dimple pattern uh, to help with uh, attachment 
of the boundary layer uh, and it's super wide as well so it's more than 27 mil at the brake track uh, the head is even wider than that internal on the zip is 17 mil while it's a humongous 21 mil on the head so underneath there you get uh, this machined alloy brake track black anodized it has uh, well basically unparalleled braking action the zip is also very good in the dry I haven't ridden that uh, so much in the wet but based on other zip wheels uh, the carbon wheels it's not going to be as good as a machined alloy brake track but it's pretty good this it has some delay but yeah it's it's not as good as an aluminum uh, brake track would be uh, yes yeah, so in terms of the shape back to that the head as you can see is a lenticular disc so that means it has a bulging toroidal section like a deep section rim would then it goes a bit inside dives in and then it uh, comes back again at the hub so it looks a bit more funky in my opinion and actually quite a lot of discs use this uh, type of shape and it's it's the same thing on the drivetrain side but it's not bulging out uh, of course because the drivetrain can't so it's a bit asymmetrical yeah so that's shape wise uh, from the name of course it's obvious that the Super 9 is a a carbon clincher full carbon wheel uh, and the good thing is that the tires are very easy to fit on as most zip uh, rims but it's not uh, tubeless ready whereas uh, well, officially the head isn't uh, tubeless ready either but this is basically I think some kind of an Ardennes rim that they use here and those are tubeless ready so essentially there's no one stopping you from putting a tubeless valve in there put some sealant tape and you're good to go I've been using this tubeless for as long as I've owned it never had a single problem and it creates well the uh, lowest rolling resistance possible uh, of course talking about rolling resistance what is important and very good at both of these wheels is that they fit super nicely with the world's fastest tire currently which is the course speed so because of the wider internal depth or uh, width of the head of course it creates a wider platform the tire becomes wider but it's still very good uh, with the Super 9 actually both of these are designed for 23mm tires so they're still the go-to option when you care about aerodynamics uh, then as for the hubs uh, both have their own brand very high quality hubs so no complaints there nice and quick engagement low drag free hubs compatible with Shimano Campagnolo whatever you choose uh, the zip it still uses uh, the 188 hub internals unlike the newer wheels which use the Cognition or the 177 and it still has the preload adjustment very easy to assemble and one particular feature about the zip is that it can be converted to track use so if you uh, pull the free hub off put on a little adapter then you can actually fit this into a track frame and you remove this little rock rock ring and the carbon uh, spacer there you put on your track cog and you're good to go uh, with the heads it's uh, not an option but head make completely different uh, disc wheels for track use and you probably wouldn't want to use a clincher on the track anyway finally uh, we also have to consider the pricing and the competition so the zip is going to be much more expensive due to the full carbon construction although I have to say the head when you buy it new is not that much cheaper and considering that the zip will last basically forever and the head probably won't or well there's less chance for it the zip might be a better investment long term 
Having said that, uh, the head is actually a more uh, future-proof option in terms of design and features as a tubeless compatibility is what I mean mainly and a superb brake track although I think the ultimate wheel if Zip were ever to release that is an updated version of the Super 9 with the cognition hub set showstopper brake track and tubeless compatible that would be I think the ideal version maybe with uh, the imprint graphics as well but since the market uh, for disc wheels is not huge I don't think uh, we'll see that anytime soon but maybe uh, we'll get a surprise release this year or sometime in the future as for the competition uh, not many brands at least that I'm aware of, uh, sorry I'm aware of make uh, carbon clincher discs or clincher discs in general a uh, notable option is the air coach disc but that's super heavy 150 grams uh, heavier uh, than I think the head or roughly in that region more than 1300 grams that's uh, even for me that's a bit too much same goes for the pro uh, clincher disc which is very similar in design to the head same lenticular shape and construction same although not the same weight it's uh, just as heavy as the aero coach disc so not uh, not very good in terms of that we then we have the drag to zero uh, disc which uh, allegedly is faster than any of these but it's tubular only so I think that slight advantage in aerodynamics is lost by the fact that it's a tubular wheel. Uh, also Mavic and Pro, was, uh, Pro have tubular discs as well. Again, those are not very convenient and slower in terms of the rim and tar interface, also in rolling resistance and practicality, uh, which is not ideal either. Another worthy competitor uh, will have to actually be the two spoke wheels which are allegedly uh, faster than either of the discs but I haven't been able to prove or disprove that as of now but they are super modern tubeless ready with good braking uh, fairly good weight etc so uh, good handling in the wind as well so we'll see okay I think that's all about time traveling wheels for the, today I hope you have found this useful and will help you on your choice. If you want to know more about my time traveling equipment, then don't forget to tune into the channel and subscribe. It's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.